All right, so it is about a day or two later. Um, I had to play with this a little bit to try to get the mesh to look like what I wanted. And I think I got mostly there. Still some things I'd, uh, I'd, I'd want to try to make a little less sort of blobby. But overall, I think it came out pretty well. So I'm going to go through the mesh settings that I used here. I used a VDB mesh, so... <clears throat> particle mesh VDB. I actually did try it with the particle mesh and just comparing the two. I think I got slightly nicer looking results with the particle mesh, but the build times on the mesh were just tremendously long. So the particle mesh VDB literally was a few seconds, 10, 10 seconds, something like that. Whereas this could go three, four minutes. So if you imagine you've got, I've got about 176 frames here um, at two to three minutes per to mesh that would have just taken forever so the particle uh, mesh vdb is a lot faster um so i decided to stick with that one and then what i did for my settings here so polygon size i did not do an auto polygon size because when i did that it would go for a long time before it actually made anything so i just set it to 0.01 um, and that's that's resulted in a mesh like right here at this frame that mesh is over five million uh faces so it's it's a it's a heavy mesh um but nothing that uh maya can't handle it it goes in there just fine um <clears throat> so uh polygon size 0.01 then i came down here volume filter so this is usually closed like this you hit the plus there's these filters that you can throw in here just hitting the plus you can you can pick one of these so the dilate filter just uh enlarges your fluid so it, it pulls it it inflates it kind of uh, erode does the opposite. It shrinks it down in, in an effort to try to get it to, to closer um, approximate the particles. So I, I added the erode filter. And then the smooth, if you got a little too much detail on the surface, you can put the smooth. So I put those two on there. Each one of these has a setting. And if you go in the, uh, in the help docs here, it'll tell you exactly what these do um, and all the different, uh, like the offset settings and stuff. So it's all in there. Uh, you know, this just, just determines how much of an effect that erode has. And then the same with the smooth iterations. How many iterations of smooth do you want to put on there? So, you know, you can turn this off. And let's go ahead and build this again. So, and by the way, you can right-click right up here and go build. That's another way to build your mesh. And let's give it a sec here. And you can always, this, uh, this little um, message window here. Is really nice because it gives it timestamps everything so right now it says meshing press escape to abort and then in a, in a, in a little bit here it's going to say done and then you can compare the two timestamps to see uh just how long it took so let's see here there we go so yeah we're still about the same amount of uh of smooth there so uh it just sort of evens out the uh the mesh there for you okay so i'll show you what the actual simulation looks like so i got up to see my domain here you know it, when it's all said and done let's see give it a sec here we go i was at about 6.5 million particles so this took i don't know about a half hour or so to simulate on my computer, 40 minutes, something like that. So if you've got a decently powerful system, it's not going to really take that long. And I got some really nice detail, as you can see right in here. You got some really, really nice stuff here. Um, and I had some nice splashing here because, again, I played with the emitter speed in my curve here. So I went up and down and up and down. And what that does is that it... When it goes real fast, like this point, you get a lot of splashing. So that was really nice. Uh, still some things I would probably like to do, like break up this part here more. Uh, but we'll go with this for right now. Uh, let's, let's go back a little bit here. So we can see how I start slow and then I start to, start to build up. And then I this is where it kicks up a lot here. So you can see that the, the shading of the particles is done by velocity. So if I scroll down here. And go to display, it says properties, velocity. So the faster the particles are moving, the whiter they become. And then the slower they're moving, the bluer they become. So that's just a visualization thing. It really doesn't do anything. 
Um, and then you can, you can adjust this gradient yourself. If you want, you know, to, to have that white come in sooner, you can, you can play with these values. Generally, I don't mess with this at all. Uh, you can also switch it to different things here. Um, if you had it calculate vorticity, you can use that, which I did not age. So the older particle get the, the, gets the, the wider, the, the closer to white it is. You know, it, it's really, it's really up to you. But velocity seems to be the one that I, I prefer to use. So, um, that's that's what I use. So you know, I'm getting some pretty nice nice shapes in my fluid here. I'm getting some nice splashing right there, as you can see. So overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Um, again, there's always there's always stuff you can tweak and adjust and make better, but that's all right. Um, so let's let's hide these. I, I like to hide my particles when my mesh is on. That way, I'm not seeing you know the particles underneath there. Um, and so this is the mesh version of this which again I think came out pretty well. Now, you'll notice that on the oops, zoom in, on the curb here, we got this sort of thick layer of water here. This is this is one of those uh, drawbacks of, of having an even friction over the whole thing. So for the vertical surfaces of this curb, um, I would probably adjust the, the, the friction down to almost nothing so that the water is not sticking to this wall so much. Uh, because it's, it's it's kind of a natural water it doesn't just stick there like uh, like honey wood or something like that. So uh, having a having a, f a friction map is always a good idea, and then have it really low friction on these vertical walls so that the water just sort of drips off and it really quickly and doesn't just sort of slowly uh, slide down there as if it was honey or syrup or something like that. So again, something to keep in mind as you as you work on that. Um, oh, and then the the other reason that I used the erode filter was because when I meshed it initially whoops the there's a little there's still a little bit of it going on here you can see how there's a little bit of inner penetration here without that erode it was a lot more so that allowed me to shrink the mesh down closer to the particles to allow for um, the the mesh to feel like it was it was coming out of there not inner penetrating so that's another reason I use the erode here and then under you know the mesh filter itself I turned on and these settings here, again, this is, you know, thinning, uh, you know, relaxation, and so forth, again, is over here. They tell you what the, the recommended values are, 0.1 to 0.3. I use a 0.5. Just, I, I did a lot of testing, and that seemed to, to give me the best results. Uh, relaxation sharpens your edges and whatnot, so I, I put a little bit of that in there. Um, the tension, I think, I, yeah, I think I just left that at, uh, at a 0.1. And then the steps. They tell you between 8 and 32, and 8 and 32 were, uh, as you can see, these higher values mean less mesh detail. So 8 and 32 were just, just losing too much of that detail. So I put it at 6, and that seemed to work uh, very nice for me. So, you know, it, it really comes down to you got to play with these settings and see what, what works for you. So try the different things um, and see what you come up with. Okay, so that is the, those are the mesh settings here. Uh, let me just go in the preferences here. So just to go through some of these again, um, under general, access setup. So if, if I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you're not loving, loving the navigation and, and you're not getting that Maya navigation that, that you want, I think the default, I can't remember which one of these is the default, but the one I have, uh, YZX, XSI, Maya, Houdini, gives you that Maya navigation. I think it, the, other, the default is one of these two. If you're using 3D Studio Max, this is what you would use. This is a Z up, like in 3D Studio Max. If you're using Maya, I would use this one. Lightwave Cinema 4D, I th that might actually have been the, the default. So I would switch it to that to get the navigation that you want. Um, and then I think that's all there. Let's go into simulation. Um, FPS output might default to 30. I put it to 24. It doesn't really matter if you default, if yours is at 30, because I didn't mention it before. That just means you switch your Maya uh, viewport to 30. When you bring the stuff in so I, I like 24 because you know that that's six frames per second that i don't have to render over 30 so uh, I, I prefer to do that plus that that's a more cinematic uh, uh frame rate and then the threads of course you can tell how many to use sub steps um i believe it's usually uh, one to 300 or something like that i, I did a minimum of 25 to 150 and because i'm using diverso you know, making sure that this is turned on. Now, this is a global setting, 
And if you remember, there's there's the other setting over there. If you change the setting down here when the simulate button, it's just doing it for that project. This doing it here is going to set it as your def as your default settings. Okay, so uh, there's that. And then display. I told you about the selected nodes here, just so that you only see the the thing that's uh, selected. Um, so that's pretty much I think everything in here. Okay, so. Then the other thing is in Export Central, F12, uh, making sure that you are putting out your wet map textures. And then also, if you want to change the, uh, the way that it names files, if you come up here to File Name Options, this is what it's going to look. It's, I think it defaults to this one here with the underscore. So you can pick one. I, I, I just you went with this. Um, sometimes Maya's got a weird way of, of, uh, of reading the... Uh, the file names if it's not a specific way um, so you can set it there then the other thing is tiff I would actually advise you not to use tiff because I did I did use tiffs the first time and I brought to Maya and it wouldn't read them now what I'm thinking is the issue is that it's probably putting some kind of compression on those tiffs uh, and Maya does not like that at all. It, Maya will use TIFFs fine with no compression. So I would use something else. Try, you know, uh, the PNGs, JPEGs, Targas. I wouldn't use BMPs. It's just not very good. Try one of these other types here, and, and hopefully that'll that'll run okay. So what I had to do was actually I had to go um, uh, import the frames into After Effects and then export them out in a, in, a, in, a, in a TIFF format but with no compression. So to avoid that step, probably don't use... TIFFs out of out of RealFlow, okay, for your web maps. Um, and uh, what else here? Uh, the water mesh. So uh, as I said before, you can use bin. I also uh, I'll put the uh, the Alembic sequence just just for those of you that do not have that are you know if you're working on a Mac or whatever, um, you can use Alembic because you you will not be able to import the bin meshes without the plugin for Maya. So use Alembic, uh, you can export Alembic, and I did that just so I could show you how to put it together to bring it into Maya. Okay, uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And the particles here are just RPCs by default, that's fine. Okay, so I'm done there. So once I had my simulation done, 176 frames, I then, you see that it's yellow because I set it to cache just by, if you... If you click on the rocket ship while it's green once, you, it'll be cached. This way, it's not going to re-simulate that. And again, I'm gonna, I used the uh, command line simulation because it's faster. So go in here, but you have to set it, you have to do something in the options here. If you go into command line options, you want to set this to mesh. Okay, so it'll know to just do the mesh and not the, the particles. So it'll go through frame by frame. Uh, for for the entire frame range, and do your meshing for you. Okay, it's pretty. It's actually pretty quick. Obviously, it gets slower the more more faces you're you having to generate, but it's actually pretty quick. It's it's not bad at all. Okay, so that's how you set that, and then when you're done, you can go back to none, and then hit OK. Uh, oh, another thing I did. I did actually increase my scale a little bit. It was at 0.35. I I, I set it to 0.5. Just with a little trial and error because I, that, that started to give me more of the detail in the water that I wanted. So scale, while important, you, you know, sometimes you just got to fudge it and use a much bigger scale than, than real life in order to get something that looks the way that you want it to look. Just bear in mind, if your scale is too big, what's going to happen is because this hydrant is now like humongous, your water is going to feel like it's falling in slow motion. That's because it's, it's got a longer way to fall. Right, so if it's a if it's like a ten foot hydrant and you're scoring water, that water is going to take a while to get to the ground. So it's going to feel like it's moving in slow motion just when you look at it. So just keep that in mind when you when you do this, um, that 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 might happen. Okay, so uh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I just basically took a, took some time to to figure out some settings that gave me my best uh, mesh here. Um, and these are the settings that I came up with. Just 0.01 polygon size, an erode filter, smooth filter, turn on mesh filter, thinning a 0.5, relaxation 0.25, tension 0.1, and steps 6. And that's pretty much it. Everything else I didn't really touch over here. Um, so that's what gave me this, this mesh right here. 
Okay. And and then also the wet maps got uh, exported as well. Okay. So just going back into, into uh, Export Central here. So the the mesh is here. So you see I, I put a, a, a subfolder here. So you just double click if you want to add subfolders. Call Sim 2 because I actually simulated this a couple times just to to get it the way I want it. So you can do that. You can add you can add subfolders. You, you, they, they don't have to previously exist on your hard drive. You just add them here, and if it doesn't find it, it's going to put it in there. It's going to actually create that subfolder. Okay, so it's all it's all in there. You can tell it where to where to put everything, um, and then you can go in there. So what does the simulation itself look look like? So in my hydrant scene here the particles themselves are stored in the particles folder so if you open that and then because they are rpc particles they, they get put in the rpc folder and there they are so this, this is the original sim and then sim 2 is when i redid it again so these are the dy domain and you really you should name you should name these um because i actually ran into I, well actually it wasn't too bad but sometimes you can run to an issue because this is dy domain 01 because there's a number on the end there and then it's going to do a frame padding of five if you come in your file name options it's got a, a padding size of five so it's got to put five digits after that and if there's already numbers on there it's going to look you know instead of it being zero it's going to be have you know one like 100,000 or whatever which sometimes is an issue sometimes it's not so just bear that in mind. Just you know, name this water particles or something like that. I did rename. I did. Uh, I did rename my mesh to water mesh, just so that it uh, was named correctly. So, um, so right there, there's your particles. And then the meshes themselves. There's a meshes folder right here. So again, I did this multiple times. And I, here's my sim two. And there's the. We see it says water mesh. So water mesh zero 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 zero, um, and then so on and so forth. You want to make sure you got enough padding on there. Uh, technically, this this is a three-digit number, so uh, I could have gone by with just a, a padding of three or four instead of five. Okay, uh, so that's where those go, um, and really those are the two main main folders there. And then some of these are my Maya folders, so that's why this list is actually longer than it would be if it was just a uh, a real flow project. Okay, so there's that. So then you know, like I said, I just ran the the mesh simulation, and then. Uh, say you know, say it saved those out as well, and it had already saved out my uh, wet maps. The wet maps are going to make a big difference. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you when we put everything together how important the wet maps are. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for in here. We just need to now take all this back into Maya and uh, set it all up. So let's go back into Maya. So this, this is the original scene here. And I don't need these thickened ones, so I'm going to grab them. I'm just going to control H to hide them because those were just there for simulation purposes. So I don't need them. So now we have our scene here. So if you are using the RealFlow plugin, it's very easy to bring in your mesh. Right here, bin, the, the rightmost button is import a bin mesh so if you click on that here's my folder uh, since i already did this once uh it's here so all you need to do is click the first one so click the first one and load it and it's going to bring up this because it knows to import a uh, bin mesh sequence so it, you got to punch in the same padding value that you had in real flow which the default is five i never really change it because my because you might confuse things if you're used to a padding of four and you put a four in here, but it was five, it might cause some issues. So five padding in there. Sequence offset, if you don't want this to start at frame one, so the the frame number of the mesh. So let's go in here and look at our meshes right here. So each of these has a number. So number one, and this this is the Alembic and this is the bin file. So number one is gonna go to frame one and so on. So number two to frame two. If you need to offset these so they start 100 frames earlier or later, you can put that sequence offset in here. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, Create, and you'll see it creates a real flow mesh. Right now I'm at frame 1, so there's nothing there because I had no particles yet in frame 1. As I go up a few, you can see now I have something in there. Let's isolate that. Okay, so there's, there's the beginning of our particles. And if we keep going, you can see that we're getting our mesh. Okay, you can see at the beginning I can scrub it just fine. That's because there's there's only there's only about sixty eight thousand <coughs> frames.
faces here, but obviously as this increases, more water is poured out. This is starting to get, you know, now I'm at 498,000. And as I start to get further and further, um, now I'm at about 2.8 million. So obviously this just gets bigger per frame. But you can see it works, right? You just scrub it and the, the particles animate as you would expect. So hit control one. So there we go. Okay. So now you can see that the scene can start to chug a little bit as it's reading all this stuff. So it, it's really that simple. That it's really that simple as to how you bring this in. Everything is in the correct in the correct place, and now all you got to do is really just shade this. Put your your shaders on there and go. Okay. So I'm going to delete it real fast just so that we can do it the other way. So the alembic files. So if you export an alembic sequence, the way that you would deal with this. And this is one of the things I don't like about Alembic, but you have to stitch those files together. Because if I come in here to Maya and right here in the cache, right, I'm in my modeling tool set. I don't know if it's there for all the tool sets. So yeah, it's there for animation. It might be one of those that's always there. Yeah, it's there. So under cache, you got Alembic cache and you can import Alembic. And let's go ahead then and go find those. So it's under meshes and sim2 and we want the abc's again uh i'm just you know you click one and actually no let's let's click one let's click one of the later um so let's go to um, so, so it made a mesh here i'm going to delete that let's go ahead and do um what am i on frame 58 let's go to import alembic and let's do frame 58 and uh, let's give it a still so it's going to take a little bit longer because that frame is a lot Heavier. But notice that nothing happens when I scrub the timeline. Okay, this is one of those those annoying things about Alembic files, is that they need to be stitched into a single file. And to me, this is just not very good because well, what happens is you end up with a file that is huge, right? So I, I already did it. This is the Alembic file that they're all stitched. It is 19 gigabytes in size. And that's only 176 frames. You could have a couple thousand frames of simulation, right? And you can imagine, and, and essentially what's going to happen is it'll crash on you if you give it too many frames. So what you end up having to do is do chunks of frames per single Alembic, right? So, you know, I don't know, it's probably like three or three or 400 uh, frames before it starts to crash on you. So whatever that number is, if you got a 2000 frame sim and you could only do, say, 500 frames at a time and have it be stable, then you got to have multiple chunks of frames at you know 500 a piece so that's kind of annoying but i'll show you how to, how to uh, stitch all this together so right here in real flow uh, under tools right here it says stitch alembic files okay so go here and then you got to add the files so let's go into our meshes sim 2 here and i'm going to take all the you'll see that it's just showing the the alembic files you have to select them all so click on the first one shift select the last one it's going to select all of them and then you hit open it's going to list them all and then you give them an output file so usually i'll just go into the meshes folder and put it right there right uh, and then hit stitch and it'll, it'll take a little bit but it's going to combine all those files into a single file and then so once that is done you can come back into Maya. I'm going to delete this one. You can come back into Maya and then go to cache, Alembic cache, import Alembic. And then let's get that single one again. Very big file. Water mesh. Okay. Give it a second. You're going to see it's going to take a while. But now it will actually animate. And, it, you know, it's a lot slower because it's reading an 18, 19 gigabyte file. But it is going to work. OK, so, um, you know, this is a limitation. If, if you if you are in the Mac, you know, it is what it is. got to deal with it. Um, but if you are on the PC and can get the can get the plug in, just use this. And there's our bin files. Load the first one. It's, it's going to give you this. Just say yes and give it a sec. OK, so you can you can see how much more responsive it's still going to be pretty heavy um but it's actually not too bad okay so there we go just keep that in mind if you can just use the uh the bin mesh sequence
Okay, so that's what we're gonna do here. So let's uh, let's put so let's put a water shader on here. So a very simple thing you do in Arnold. Uh, I'm just gonna right click on it, assign favorite. Now I've added my favorites here. If you don't have a favorite, just go to assign new material and go to uh, <clears throat> AI standard surface. Okay, and we're gonna set our weight to one here the base just as a as a default thing that i do and then we're just going to apply a preset so come to presets and we're going to there's clear water and there's deep water clear water is completely clear as the name suggests the deep water's got a little bit of color to it so i like to put the the deep water preset and replace um and and also it allows me to actually see this thing in the viewport although when i'm over here uh, with the other one, you can't, it, it's so clear that it's, it, if you deselect it, it disappears, uh, which is not a big deal, really. But there you go. So there's, there's the water shader. It's on there. Pretty much everything's done that you need to do for the shader. Um, the, the big thing is the, the IOR, the index of refraction, needs to be 1.33, and that preset has all that in there. So honestly, once you've set that preset, you don't really have to do anything else. Notice that my base is deactivated because when transmission is on, at 100%, you can see if I turn, bring it down from 100%, the base comes back. But when I'm at 100% on transmission weight, the the uh, base contribution is is uh, deactivated. So you just get um, your your what you see in the screen is coming from transmission. Okay, so just keep that in mind there. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's do a render here and see what we have. <coughs> So it'll probably have to, uh, let's see, give it a sec. Okay, I paused the render for a second there. Um, but this is what we're getting. Okay. Uh, you know, not not that great. <laughs> uh, the water shader looks fine, but it, it, this, this water is just not interacting with the ground the way that you would expect it to do. Okay, so um, that is that is one of the limitations, which is why we have the wet maps. The, the big deal here is that the ground is not getting wet. If you take concrete, it darkens when you get it wet. Okay, just think about when you when you pour water on a on a concrete walkway, right? You're gonna get dark gray. It's gonna go from the light concrete gray color to a very to a darker gray color and then it's also going to be a lot shinier Con dry concrete is not shiny at all unless it's been polished but just your standard dry concrete is not very shiny but you pour water on it it becomes almost reflective it gets darker and it becomes uh, almost reflective so that's what we need to set up for our wet version of the saw of the uh of the texture okay so let's close this and I'm going to go ahead and just hide this mesh, just control H, just to get out of there because it's a lot of polygons and it's going to slow us down. So I'm going to open the hypershade, so this guy right here. And these are our two shaders, okay? This is for the ground, which is the sidewalk and the road, and this is the actual curbs, okay? So I'm going to duplicate both these shader networks. Okay, so let's just... I'm going to pin these, just select them and hit P just so that they don't get reshuffled. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to take our ground shader, select this node here, the shading group node. Okay, I'm going to just duplicate the entire network going backward, but I, all I need to select is a shading group. Go to Edit, Duplicate, Shading, Network, and you'll see that it creates exact same shader as the other one. Now... The one thing that it does do is if you click on here to roughness, it'll, it'll, if you look at the roughness here, we're at raw, but, and then we also have in the color balance alpha is luminous. So here though, when you make the duplicate, it didn't save that. So make sure you set this back to raw and then alpha luminance is on. Same with the normal, it should be at raw. Okay. So when you make those duplicates, just keep that in mind. Okay. So we're going to call this one. Ground shader wet. And I'm going to just copy this over because just the habit that I like to get into here is renaming the shading group so that it's easy to see what it belongs to. Okay, so to make this wet, all we're going to do is get rid of our roughness map. Okay, just get rid of it. 
and then now we could just we can just adjust the the specular oh not the color but the specular roughness so we want something low down here the 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 further closer to zero it is the shinier and more reflective it is so we can play with this um by by simply let's go ahead and what we showed is this the ground so we're going to take this shader and we're going to apply it to our road and our curves so ground shader wet just right click apply to selection okay so now we can't see what the roughness is doing because we got a render but let's mess with the color here so i'm going to take my color node and i need to put a color correct node in between these two okay so what i'm going to do is tab ai color correct okay so i need a color correct node i'm going to take this out color plug it in the input take the out color of that color correct node and plug it into the base color so what we're going to try to do here is just darken the color and i'm going to move this over uh so you, now okay so what's going to happen is you're going to lose your the, the textures that you have on there they're not gone it's just the viewport's not going to display this so in order to actually test this out we're going to have to initiate a render okay so we're going to turn on the ipr render and so this is what we have here it's it's really you can see you can see the red reflection of the uh, fire hydrant right in there because my roughness this is hard to do and get everything in frame here my my where's my roughness so if I select my shader my roughness is really low if I turn it on to zero you're gonna get this really reflective thing here so you probably don't want it at zero so maybe somewhere around there 0.2 right in there and then for the actual base color I'm gonna go on my color correct node and I'm gonna drop my gamma and you can see how that darkens and the more I drop it, the darker it gets. Okay, now you don't want to go too far with it. You just want it to be darker and shinier. Okay, this is way more shinier now. And it's also quite a bit darker. So let's go 0.3. Okay. Uh, actually, you know what? That might be too much. So let's go 0.4. Something like that. 0.45 or something. You know, um, whatever, whatever works for you. So it's darker and it's shinier. So that's what we want for our wet shader. Okay, I'm going to stop this render here. And let's do the same with the curb shader. So select your shading group. Come up here to edit. Duplicate shading network. I'm just going to duplicate that. And then we're going to call this curb shader wet. Okay, so curb shader wet SG. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get rid of, actually, before we do that, um, our normal map. So normal, we want to make sure we set this to raw. We don't, we don't need the roughness, so we can just go ahead and delete that. And then just set our roughness uh, down again. You know, whatever it was, 0.2 or whatever it is. So let's go ahead and run this render again. And our... And then we need to select the curves and apply that wet shader. So apply that. Okay. And hopefully that'll update. And then we could go in the, in the wet shader here. And if we drop our roughness, it should be shinier. And then again, for the color, the base color, which is here. Okay. Now in this one, it has this multiply divide node. I'm just going to delete that and put an AI color correct. Okay, out color to input, out color to base color, and then drop this again, what I use, 0.45. And you can see how that darkens the curb there. And let's, um, oh, our roughness is at zero, so let's maybe not say. So you can see some of that reflection of that hydrant on the curb so that we have a, it looks like, it looks like it's rained on this now. It's all shiny and wet. Okay, so... <clears throat> So that's what we want. All right, so we have the original shaders and now we have the wet shaders. So how do we only show the wet shader where the water is actually touched? That's what the wet map's for. Okay, the way that we're gonna get this to work, let's start with the ground shader here. Let me stop my render. Um, actually, before we do that, let, let's, let's look at what the, the wet shader is doing. So let me, I'm just gonna select these here, the, the ground here. And I'm going to apply a 
new let's just use a Lambert okay and in there I'm gonna put the go to file and then I'm gonna go find my wet map so the wet maps are in the real flow project under images okay and again I did this twice so I'm gonna go into my sim 2 here so the curbs are right there but what I want is not the curves I want the road one so here we go road that one oh this is right I had to renumber these because there we go so we need to go in here um, <clears throat> so go find your road 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 there we go go to the first one road zero oh, go to one okay so what the what this should allow you to do now is if I did this correctly let's hit uh, six make sure that our textures are visible and let's see so why am I not seeing this here let me run a render actually I shouldn't have to run a render oops what I do there we go so oh so what I what I uh, what I forgot to do is in the Lambert I want a sequence so I need to make sure I turn on image so I, I went and selected the image and what I forgot to do was turn on use image sequence okay so it's going to now uh, bring them in according to the the frame number so this is what the wet map is looking like then we splash across so that's our wet map okay so all it is really is a mask okay and we're going to use that to switch between the two different textures the dry texture and the, and the wet texture so where it's black it's going to be the dry texture where it's white it's going to be the the wet texture uh, so pretty pretty straightforward there so let me go ahead and um, bring this back so our Lambert here got put in here so I can just grab all the nodes for the Lambert just to get it out of the oh did I no I didn't okay so let's get rid of I'm just gonna delete that Lambert okay so we don't need that anymore okay so then what we need to do is make a new shader called a mix shader so tab AI mix shader and what the mix shader does allows you to mix two different shaders so our dry shader is going to be plugged into shader one and our wet shader is going to be plugged into shader two okay so that that's what that's going to look like and yeah this is green now because i just took off that lambert so what i can do is yeah, let me go back to frame one here so what I can do is just select this and this again and this time what I'm going to apply to it is this new mix shader so I'm going to call this um, road mix because it's the mix shader for the road so let's copy that and then go in its shading group and paste that so I'm going to apply road mix to this now you don't be able to see anything so these these don't show up in the viewport because this is two shaders on top of each other um, and then if you go in the in the mix shader node you can see there's a mix way to 0.5 so all, all it's going to do right now is take those two shaders and sort of mix them at a 50-50 at a uh, ratio so what we can do is plug a map into our mix so that we tell it exactly where to be one and where to be the other and, and how much of a mix you really want so we're going to use our mix shader for that so uh, I'm sorry our, we're going to use our uh, wet map for that so hit tab and just go to file and we want file texture so it's going to bring this here okay so this is we're going to load our wet map in here so click on this come in here and we want the road da -da -da -da, just like we did before road uh, one and hit open and then use the image sequence is what we want okay now you'll notice that mix is a single value it's not a compound value like shader RGB there's only one value there so what we have to do is open up the out color and just use the red channel plug it into the mix for that okay so that's what we have there let's do the same for the curves so we need a mix shader so tab AI mix oops mix so we want to pick the mix shader and we'll call this curb mix and I'm just going to copy this and plug it into the shading group node we're going to take the dry one and put in the shader one 
take the wet one, plug it into shader two. Okay. Then we need to attach the wet map for the curves. So tab and type file, and we want file texture. Okay, here we're gonna plug in the curb one here. Open that up, use image sequence, open up the out color. Because if I if I try to take out color as it is, it you see that mix gets grayed out, it won't let me connect it. So I gotta use the red channel. So grab the red channel and plug that. It could be any of the three channels. I like to, I just use the red. Okay, so now that's on there. And then we can take our curves and apply that, apply the mix, the curb mix to the curves. Okay, so again, the viewport, you're not going to see anything. So let's, let's go see what we got. I'm going to go into my camera. So we have a render cam in here. Maybe, there we go. Okay, so let's, let's, Put it somewhere, frame 56, let's say. Uh, and remember, I've hidden my, my water right now. I don't, I'm not looking at the, the water. I'm looking at the, the wet map. So let's go into Arnold and open Arnold Render View. Okay. So this, again, this was the wet texture. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to save this, this, this snapshot here. And let's run it and see what we get. Okay. So this is working. You can see where the water is touching the curb and the road. We get that darker, shinier color, and everywhere else, it's still the dry road. Okay, let's go up a few frames here. Let's go to frame 89, and let's run this render again. And there you go. You can see how that looks. Let me, let's switch to the perspective, and let me get a um, different angle on this. So I'm going to go through to the perspective camera. Uh, here we go. Everything's a little slower now because um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So let's get a different angle here. Maybe something like this. And let's bring back our render window. And let's do a, a render from there. Oh, yeah, let me just do a uh, an IPR. And let's move over. And two, there we go. Okay, so you can see how that's working. Okay, so we got wet here where the water is touched. We get some nice splashing, but everywhere else is dry. You can see, you can see some of that reflection in there, but you can't see it in the dry parts of the uh, simulation there. So let's bring back our water then. So I'm going to click on the real flow mesh. Shift H to unhide it. And it might take a second because this is quite a ways in here that you can see it behind there. Um, there it is. So let's let's uh, go back to our camera view. So render cam shape here. Let's click on that. You might want to save, by the way. Um, when things start to slow down like this, it's a good time to make sure you save regularly. So let's run a render now with the actual water in there. Maybe today sometime. So it's got to update the scene because I have unhidden there. And there we go. So there's our water with the wet map underneath, which helps sell the, the realism of it. Okay, so like I said, there's things I'd like to change. This this tube of water right here is just too solid and too thick. Um, I would like to break that up a little bit. Like, you see how broken up this is here? You get really nice details, and the refractions are very interesting versus here. Um, and that's simply, you know, maybe putting something in the um, in the emitter or in front of the emitter. Put a put a cube or a small cube or a couple cubes in there that'll the water will hit them and sort of split and break apart and that might give you a little bit of extra detail in there so you you have to use little tricks to um to get there because i mean if you can imagine a a, a fire extinguisher uh, i'm sorry a fire hydrant that that's just opened up like that you'd get pretty churned up water in here so you want to you want to simulate that by trying to break that up in there okay so that's what that looks like and 
I say it looks it looks pretty good. Uh, and all I did was just drop the gamma and and increase the rough uh, decrease the roughness on that second shader, and then just take a mix shader. So let me. Everything's real slow here. Uh, let's go back to frame one, just because yeah these these frames where we have a lot of polygons are a little on the slow side here. So that's all it is. Just take those two shaders, the dry shader and the wet shader, plug them in, dry on top, shader one, and wet on the bottom. The way this mix shader works is if you think of Photoshop, you got a stack of layers. So this is what it is, except it's backwards. So the thing that's going to be on top is actually shader two, and shader one is what's, what's below it. Okay, and then the mix just tells, you're basically using a mask to cut out a whole uh, to cut out the the uh, the wet shader around where the the uh, wet map is, okay. So that's essentially it. So let me show you then a render. So where did I put this? I put it in the movies folder, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just start a new file here, so that this is not trying to worry about that so much. And then let's let's open this here, and this is a render here of what we get and I've rendered it at, at a couple different angles so this is a higher angle here and you can see how that that wet map really sells it if you remember how it was before we put the wet map on there it just didn't look right well that wet map really helps to sell this okay so there we go that's that's essentially how you would do this um, fire hydrant simulation And depending on the lighting, um, you know, the thing with water is you got to have something to refract and reflect. Uh, and so having an HDR really helps. It helps to to get the detail into the actual water. And you can see you can see the red of that hydrant as things are getting refracted. You can see um, you can see all that red in there. That's really nice there. And water with the Fresnel index of water, um, that uh, index of refraction setting means that when you're looking at the water straight on uh, perpendicular to the water it's basically inv almost invisible but when you when you look at it at a glancing angle it's reflect it, it's way more reflective so that that's the Fresnel effect um, and this shader does give us that effect so from this high angle here you can see just looking down into the puddle here so let me pause here <clears throat> Looking it down in the puddle, you don't see anything except for these these little ripples here because they're the angle of view is a little steeper. You get those highlights, those refract those re reflections there. So uh, that is that that Fresnel effect at work there. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean that's uh, pretty much it on this um, nice little experiment. Now again, I, I just dropped the gamma on the wet um, on the wet shader, and it's kind of turned that that yellow stripe kind of orangey, which you know may I don't think it really turns that orange if it gets wet. So you know there's other ways you can do it. You can drop the exposure. You can you know the different ways that, or you can go to Photoshop and just just take this texture and 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 alter it there. I just this this is really simple, really easy, and it, it, it's a very nitpicky detail. So I'm okay with it, um, and ignore the little watermarks in the background, the Arnold watermarks, because I batch rendered this because it's faster. Um, but it's not; it's not. Uh, they're they're not too noticeable, so it's fine. Okay, so that is a fire hydrant using real flow and Maya, and rendered in Arnold, and you can do some pretty interesting effects with real flow and if you're going to do it make sure to always do the wet maps because they do they they set this off this this looked horrible without the wet maps but as soon as we put the wet maps on there now it's starting to look really really good really convincing okay so uh <coughs> that is the end of this tutorial the next one we're going to do is simulating something a little bigger like a river and uh, I'll see you in that video. All right, so hope you enjoyed it, and see you in the next one.